Hey everybody, we are live. Hi Cheryl, how are you doing? It's good to be, it's good to be live with you guys. I'm going to go ahead and give our greeting. I'll just get started by saying that if you are here and you're looking for information on how to grow your YouTube channel one subscriber at a time, if you're looking for a group of women who are about the business of, like I said, growing that YouTube channel one subscriber at a time, and you want to learn a little bit more about tags and descriptions and that kind of thing, you are in the right place because tonight we're going to dive into that subject. We've got some questions. We've been hearing some new things, and we just want to try to sort out what's what. So before we get into that, if you're new to my channel, I'm Denise Jordan. And I teach women to make wise home health and beauty decisions. And if you want to learn more about growing a household, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see reviews about products that can benefit you in your home, hit that subscribe button because I do those videos here all the time. And if you want to learn a little bit about YouTube, you're still in the right place. So thank you guys for joining me. If you are here on the replay, I say welcome to you as well. I think you'll get a lot of value out of our discussions. We have some healthy discussions on Sunday, but particularly on Monday nights. And I think tonight's going to be a good one. And last Monday's discussion was just amazing. I don't know about you guys, but I thought last Monday was amazing. So if you're here on the replay, I think you're going to enjoy it. And for those of you that are live, how you doing? So there's Trisha from Living Beyond a Diagnosis. How are you doing? Cheryl is there. There's Craft Today with Rita Renee. I believe Karen with Karen Jeter is on. So hey to you as well. It's just really good to see you guys. I tell you what. Um, so Dana's with us. She's going to be cooking dinner and listening. So that's not a problem. So hey all of my sisters. So Kimberly Davis at Diva Designing on a Dime is with us as well. So hey everybody. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. I have to tell you guys. I... Got a couple things that I want to talk with you guys about at the end of the session that were personal. I might go off. Sorry about that. I wonder how much noise that caused. There. That should help with hearing me just a little bit better. I know there is a huge difference when I use the mic and when I don't. If you guys are interested in this little lavalier mic, I'll link it below just so you can check it out. It's like $12 or something like that, but it really does make a difference in being able to hear me. So I just happened to look down and saw the mic was like dangling on the floor and it wasn't attached to the chest. So let's even move it up a little more. It does not better. There. Okay, so there are eight of you guys on. If I could get eight thumbs up. And while I'm waiting for you guys uh, to kind of jump on, I am sipping on some lemonade. So tell me what you guys sipping on tonight. It is hot, hot, hot here, but not as bad as it's, as it's been. So I've got some lemonade in a crystal glass. Well, I can't make it do the little clingy thing because it's full of ice and lemonade. So Trisha's got some ice water. I have to tell you guys, I was going to throw this glass out because if you look right here, there's like the tiniest little crack. And I have a set of eight of those crystal glasses and that makes number eight. And let's see. Oh, Aisha's on with us tonight too. Hey, Aisha, it's good to have you here. So I'd actually set it out to get pitched, and I don't know how it ended up back in my cabinet, but then I thought, well, let me just drink out of it. So I wanted to make sure that it didn't get put anywhere where a company could get it, because just in case it broke or cracked or something like that, I wouldn't want company to have it. But you know what? I really like drinking out of it, and it feels different from my other, like, regular glass glasses. It's probably all in my head. So uh, Karen's drinking Gatorade. Diva's drinking Lemonade. And Yitra, hey Yitra, I haven't seen you for a while. It's good to have you back with us as well. So listen, guys, um, 
it, it's just been interesting. I went through all three of the videos again today that we were supposed to take a look at. And I just find this whole discussion now about tags very interesting. So here's my little notebook that I always put the notes and things in for our Monday night strategy sessions. And if I look back to even just two weeks, the information that we have had regarding tags is like has done a 360. So, so Cheryl's drinking water and, uh, Oh, Trish has got almost 250 subbies. Way to go. Way to go, Trisha. I know you've been trying to work at growing that YouTube channel, and that's one of the things that we do here as a group. And that's one of the things that I want to talk about. So let me just ask uh, one of you ladies. I'll ask Cheryl since she's on. Maybe she'll be on for the whole night. That at some point, remind me to talk about the thing that I have to talk about regarding me because I got to do some, I got to make some changes in, in what I'm doing. But anyway, we've been on almost five minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. And the big thing that I was so concerned about, and we were kind of all just like going like, well, what you talking about, Willis, like last week was about the new video that Ben IQ put out that had to do with tags and I tell you what it was just such a surprise just such a surprise to 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 listen to what they had to say so now how many of you have had the opportunity to take a look at the vid IQ video called do YouTube tags matter anymore and they did a case study so let's start there. How many of you guys saw that video? If you've put, if you've seen it, if you just put like, saw it, or, you know, just drop saw it in the comments, or just drop me. How many of you have seen that video? And if you've seen it, just drop me in the video. But uh, so Aisha said she was surprised. Cheryl said it was mind blowing. Um, it definitely blew my mind because all the things that we have been taught about tagging appears to be under discussion. You know, maybe it's not quite the way we thought it was. And when this change came about, who knows? Because I'm thinking that the, the video that we looked at by Nick Nimmons, I think it was like maybe a year old. The one by Salma Jaffrey, I think, is only like maybe a year old. So sometime within the last year, it seems like the algorithm has made some kind of a change. So, yeah, so so there's that. And um, so right now, what we know is that we don't know. Things are just unclear. But what they did figure out is that tagging in the title and in the description make a difference. So we don't know how important tags are, but we do know they can make a difference in the title and in the description box. So I guess the question is, and which I guess I just gave it away, was going to be, so where should we use them and should we worry about them? Because we got this big old box at the bottom for tags. And then we've got the title and the description box. So the thing is to think about what we're going to do in regards to that. So, so one of the, my takeaways from that video was when the YouTube creator guy who works for YouTube said that he advises us, the creators, to spend at least 99% of our time working on our thumbnails and titles, you know, on our metadata. So let me make sure everyone is on the same page and knows what metadata is. So metadata, as Salma Joffrey says, is just data about data. So metadata is that information that YouTube collects 
to kind of decide where to show our videos, who to show our videos to, helps them figure out what our videos are about. And the data they use to make that decision are the keywords and the tags. So that's what it is. So hopefully everybody's clear about what metadata is. And I think it's important as you watch these videos that you do pick up on these terms that you do kind of figure out what they are and write them down and kind of keep them in your mind. So as we go through other videos and learn more stuff, you will know what everybody's talking about. So how many of you at this point really try to optimize your video? If you really work at optimizing your video, just drop me a little comment and just say, I do. If you work at optimizing your video, and I do, I really try to optimize every video. Probably the ones that I don't work at optimizing would be the Shout Out Sunday Show and then these Monday Night Strategy ones. I mean, because I can't optimize them when I load them because they're live. I can't optimize them until the next day. And sometimes that night I'm tired and so I just don't bother with it until the next couple of days. So several people said they do and Elaborate Design says she's trying to and uh, Everyday Living with Karen says she's trying to. So most people say either they do it or they try to. So I think it's really important that we do optimize our videos. And I was just in a session with my YouTube mentors last week. And one of the things she said was, you need to make sure you have totally optimized your last 10 videos. So I need to go back and check that. And part of the ones that I don't optimize, like I said, would be the, the live shows that we do just because I'm tired by the time we get done and I can't optimize them before. So, okay. So my next question then is how do you plan to use the information from BidIQ? How, how can you use that information? Are you going to do anything differently? I guess is my question. So for those of you that already optimize, maybe we should, I should get a good idea as to what optimize means to you. Because it might not mean the same thing to everybody. So when we talk about optimizing your video, for the most part, it means that you've worked on making sure you've got a good title and you've got your um, keywords, keyword phrases, uh, tags in the title. You've also done a good job with your description box. And so you've really used those first three lines in your description box to best advantage. And that you also use the tags and that you're tagging your video appropriately. And then over on the right, you know, you've got this column where you're supposed to put in in cards and or in screens and I cards and put things in a playlist. So how many of you are optimizing your videos? Or are you sort of optimizing? So if you're optimizing, type in optimizing. And if you're sort of optimizing, type in sort of. Because I really try to optimize mine. Sometimes, you know, I do a good job and I see the results. And then sometimes I'm like frustrated. I'm like, well, what, what could I have done differently? So Karen says sort of. Uh, Rita Renee says optimizing. Uh, Trisha's sort of, I style design sort of, I style, I forgot your name. I am so sorry. If you could tell me again, Yitra is sort of, and then Cheryl says she's starting to do that. So, so Trisha says she's more mindful of that now. And you know, Trisha hasn't had her channel real long. She's been on less than, I think, six months. You know, she's been able to get on and off because of some illnesses and some things she's been dealing with, but she's been working it. So, yeah. Okay, so we're all at a little bit different stages with the optimizing, but we're trying. So either we're trying to do it or we think we're doing a fairly good job of it or we're doing the best we can. So I guess the next question is, are you going to do anything different? Myself... I'm going to make sure that I really work at my titles, but I'm still going to try to fill out that um, uh, tag box as much as I can. 
So Aisha said she's still figuring out a lot with optimizing. Well, Aisha, at least now you you know a little bit more as to what really matters and what doesn't. So so there's that. Karen said she needs to work, to work hard on thumbnails. And you know, Karen, when we talk about thumbnails, you know it's a process. Because all of a sudden, I feel like my thumbnails are starting to really just jive with what it is, with what I, to vibe rather, with what it is that I want to do. But it took me a while before I finally figured it out. So what I've been trying to do with my thumbnails, and I'm not saying they're great, but I will say they are much better. If you look at my thumbnails today and you compare them to six months ago, six months ago, my little Morgan said, Grandma, your pictures are horrible. So I think today she'd say they're a little better. But yeah, so I'm still working on thumbnails and titles, but but they're better. And so what I try to do with the thumbnails is... um. So uh, Terrarium and Crabs, her name is Maya or Mia. I, I think it's Maya, though. But Maya said she's really been working on hers to try to optimize hers as well. So but I've been trying to make the image of myself or whatever's in the picture as large as possible. And what we do know is that most people are drawn to the human face. So almost all of my thumbnails have a picture of me in it. It's not a matter of being vain or vanity. But research has shown that people track to the image of a human face. So that's why I do that. You know, Michelle, you can certainly go back and work on um, um, thumbnails. But the question is, would it be better for you to go back and work on thumbnails or to work moving forward? So that's the thing. Maybe I'd work on the last 10 videos. And then as time allows, you can work on some of the other ones. But again, I try to get my face as large as possible, as makes sense. I'm using fewer words. Remember, we, ha we had that session a few weeks ago. Well, you know, um, Michelle, you say you're not good at showing your face. Well, you probably want to try to do that. But then some people build a channel very well and they don't show their face at all. They just have to, you know, their thumbnails just have to be really, really catchy to do that. So Trisha said her last two videos did better by showing her face. And yeah, like I said, research shows that the human face, the human eye draw, is drawn to that. But now here's the thing. If you're doing, say, something like a tablescape, then you don't have to show your face in that. And it's probably better not to because if you're doing a thumbnail about a tablescape, then we want to see the tablescape. And you don't have to show the whole table. You can show one or two place settings, but like maybe focus real closely on the one place setting rather than try to show the whole table because you can get a better look, that kind of thing. So sometimes it just makes a big difference. And like when I did the ones on the muffins, one of the ones showed up really nicely because I got a really good close-up look of the muffins and they looked very nice. But one of the ones that looked great when I filmed it, when I look at it on the screen, the muffins don't show up very well. So I might need to change that. So yeah, but thumbnails are the hardest. And I was told several times again and again and again, work on your thumbnails, work on your thumbnails. And I'm like, I'm and then one day it was like oh I get it so remember this is a growing process we don't get it done all at once and I can see where the ladies here in the circle have been making changes I have seen the thumbnails improve so we are all doing this together so Cheryl you say you got to work on your thumbnails and you do but it's something we are all working at together so we're all doing it together. So, okay. Um, so now let's go back to optimizing our videos with our tags. Let me ask you guys. So now where are you putting your tags right now? What's your strategy right now with optimizing your videos? I, I shared with you what mine was. What's your strategy?
So description box and title from Cheryl. So Kim and Michelle got a conversation going on. I think it's about thumbnails, so I'll stay out of that. So what's your strategy right now? Because we have to figure out how we're going to apply this information and whether or not we need to make a change based on what we do. So title and description box. So it sounds like not many people have been real concerned about the tag box. And then people are using the vidIQ box, uh, the vidIQ tool, as well as search for search, that kind of thing. OK, so at least. The lessons we've been learning by Salma and a few others, we've been applying those. Yeah, and I'm using the, the tag box as well. I will fill it up as much, but I tell you what, the last two videos, I didn't worry about getting to 500. But this is the other thing. This is the other thing. I find that a couple that I had tags in my in my tag box that probably were irrelevant. So one of the things that Salma talked about in her video was making sure that we don't confuse the algorithm. And so when I looked at the tags in my box, and let me just see if I can pull one up. Um, I had, and this was my one on Merry Thriftmas in July with Nesting Haven. Well, some of the tags that I have in there, I have Housewife Life, which has nothing to do with that. Um, I have, uh, I had spring cleaning, clean with me and those kind of tags. So, so I have stopped, well, I'm trying to stop doing that. So I went through and there were some of the tags on there that didn't make any sense. To the video so I took those out because again I felt like well they could be causing the some confusion with the algorithm so I'm trying to address that and I got a lot of videos that I need to address that on because what I did was I went into the advanced search the advanced option yes we should still use the tag box but we need to make sure that we are using it the right way. And I'll tell you guys what I mean by that. And I'm, I'm looking at what Salma has to say about that. So before I get to that, because I've got some notes when we get there. Do you guys know the difference between a keyword and a tag? Let's make sure we're on the same page with that. When we're looking at a keyword, that's the term that you use to research whatever your topic is going to be about. That's the term you use to pull up how many, um, hey Gina, that you to see how many people are searching for that topic, um, that kind of thing. And then once you decide that that's what you want to make your video about, that's your keyword, then you want to try to come up with several keyword phrases, long tail keyword phrases, but long keywords to try to craft your video around and you put those in the tag box. So yes, still use the tag box. Now, why do we still need to use the tag box? Well, because it's there. I think it's interesting. You know, the guy at, um, I think it's Rob on vidIQ. He said, it doesn't look like the tag box is as relevant as it once was because their newest video on the YouTube creators says it's not as important but it's still there. So I think until they take it away, we should still use it. The other thing is, is once we put the keywords in there, we can find out how well it's ranking. Um, and we can find out how well it's ranking. And so because we do want to get our videos ranked because the higher our videos rank, the higher they go in search. So that's the whole thing. So best practice is to make sure you're putting those keyword phrases in your title. Hey, wait a minute. Again, Michelle, you said you put in the keyword summer home tour and your video was what? Ranking number three. Tell us that again. We want to shout out for you. 
Yes, we want to congratulate you on that. That is cool beans. So let me see if I can find that. So you said summer home tour. Let me check that. I got to get my summer kitchen tour up, but... So what was your title, Summer Home Tour? I want to make sure that I'm putting in the right one. So congratulations. Summer home tour. So on YouTube. That is awesome, Michelle. Just absolutely awesome. Doesn't it feel good to do that? It feels like all the work you're doing is paying off. So some of us are getting there. So congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. I'm so excited for you. Okay, so Michelle, I just found you. I put I put it in. And you're not coming up number three for me, but you're in the top five. So hot dog, hot dog. And you know that can shift any minute. But my goodness, my everyday wife life, summer. Oh, that is so good. Cool beans, cool beans, cool beans. And that means, that means you've been applying the different things. So you've been doing something right. Very nice. Very nice. Hey, Tammy, it's good to have you with us as well. Doesn't that make you feel great? That is just so great. I am so happy for you. So way to go. So I'll have to write that down. You know what, though? But still, you're coming up in the top five for me. And uh, it just kind of depends on what's on there. But I typed in summer home tour and there you were in the top five. So, hey, way to go. I'm going to write that down on the YouTube list. Summer home tour, she pops up. That is really nice. It makes me feel like if you can do that, we can all hope to get there. You know, it's like we can all accomplish that goal. So that is really pretty doggone cool. Um, okay, let's see. Let me ask you guys something else. And let's talk a little bit about playlists because I thought it was interesting when he talked about playlists and that the playlist didn't come up in search when he put that term in there. It didn't come up in search at all. Now, I've typed in a couple of terms and my playlists have come up. So I wasn't sure about that. Uh, I think that was Aisha that said her first collaboration is coming up. Aisha, send me an email. My uh, email address is in the description box below. Send me an email and then I'll get it on the list for Sunday. Because, of course, we'll all want to know about it. We'll get it on the list. So, again, they said that. Playlists weren't coming up for them, but playlists, my playlists have come up in search when I've searched them. So I'm not sure how that worked for them. But when I create a playlist and speaking of playlists, ladies, I've got the corn on the cob playlist created and the link to it is in my is in the invitation video. So you can go in and and put your video in the playlist, but just make sure it's deployed for tomorrow, that is set and not to deploy until like tomorrow at 7 a.m. I think is what we said on the 16th. Um, so what we do know then is that video tags 
in isolation, meaning that if you just put the tags in the in the tag box, they don't do you much good. But if you put the tag in the description box and in your title and in the description box, it's best if they're in the first three lines and in your title, they tend to work well for you. So. So so we know that. And Michelle, I'm going to highlight you, too, so I can remember to come back to this note somewhere else. So, yeah. All right. And then Nick Nimmin's video was the next one that I looked at. And, you know, we've looked at this one before, too. And but I always get something new each time. And Nick is like real punchy and straightforward. But he does a good video. And he talked about making sure that the first thing at the top of the description should be your keyword phrase. So somewhere in those first three lines, in that first line close to the front of the description box should be your keyword phrase. And I like the way Salma talked about it when she said that if she was going to talk about how to make your video look professional, then she would say write in her keyword well, right in her description box in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make your keywords, how to make your videos look professional. And it's like in those first three lines and what she wants to the keyword phrase is there and the topic is there. And then YouTube also is listening. The algo is listening. So it hears you say it because it can like read lips and hear and all that kind of thing, too. So so that's a good thing. But um. But the other thing they talked about was looking for alternative ways to say the same thing. So and Selma really talked about that. Um, but so um, when I did mine on muffins, I did healthy Greek, mu healthy, mu healthy blueberry muffins, healthy blueberry muffins with yogurt, healthy blueberry muffins with Greek yogurt, healthy blueberry muffin recipes, recipes for blueberry muffins, that kind of thing. But not just. I try not to use single tags, but I do sometimes. So, got to work on that. Now, the interesting thing, though, about Nick was he talked about putting links in those first three lines. How many of you put links in the first three lines in your description box? That's something I've avoided doing. So tell me if you do that. If you put links in the first three lines in your description box, just put link in the comment section and that'll let me know that you do it and if you don't then I'll know that you don't but I have kind of avoided doing that and I guess because I kind of felt like if the links there in the first three lines and then somebody clicks on it it takes them off of YouTube unless I'm sending them to another one of my videos so Tammy said she doesn't I don't know I gotta have mixed feelings about that Cheryl doesn't and so Michelle said her links are further down. And see, that's the way mine are, too. My links are further down. I don't have them in those first three lines. I'm trying to pretty much optimize my description with those first three lines. So I try not to put links up there. So, okay. Do you guys try to add links to other videos, say, in a playlist or other similar videos related to the topic that you're talking about because one of the things that I've been trying to do since I've been learning all of this stuff with you guys is to encourage people to stick around yes I will link other vid well yeah, I'll link other videos on my end screen, but they're usually my videos. I don't link to another channel, but I will link to it. Like, for example, on my blueberry muffin recipe, I did a healthy blueberry muffins with oatmeal. And then I did a healthy blueberry muffins with Greek yogurt. I might link the Greek yogurt one to the one that's healthy blueberry ones. And if you like that one, I might link the blueberry smoothie to that. But... That's the way I try to do it. Or I might link the playlist like I created a playlist that has called Fruits of the Season. And I'm kind of trying to do recipes that have, uh, well, Fruits of the Season. And since it's Blueberry Month, I've been doing lots of blueberry stuff. So I would try to link those. But I have not linked off to other channels. And I don't know if you can or not. 
think you have to have like a, it has to be like an approved channel or something like that for you to be able to link away and I haven't tried that anyway I figure if I can keep you on my channel I'm gonna try to keep you there as long as possible so there's that um Yeah, I try to link to things that are similar. And I thought Nick made a good point about if you don't have the exact same thing on your channel, then to try to link to something similar. So I don't think, yeah, I think I did participate in Christmas in July last year. I should find that video and link it to my Christmas in July video this year. And then I will have, say, four uh, Christmas in July videos this year and I will create a playlist and I'll link that playlist rather than to link them individually I'll link the playlist and it's better if you've got a playlist to link It's better to link the playlist because once they start looking at the playlist and just kind of cycle through it Then that's better and then maybe try to link something else similar that they might enjoy So there's there's that Now here's the thing, and I put um, I put a little note, like I highlighted a little note right here that just says my bad because one of the things he talked about was when you put your playlist or you link your videos below, they should be videos that are relevant to the topic. And I thought, okay, I've not done that. I put in my advanced search, in the advanced area on the dashboard, I put in a bunch of videos that I just wanted to appear in there all the time. Things that I'm just always want people to take a look at. And some of them aren't relevant. Like, so for my muffin recipe, now let me find, well, for the Merry Thriftmas recipe, for, oh, that's not mine. That's somebody else's. For the Merry Thriftmas um, one, I had linked in that one, um, um, some of my cleaning videos, some of my cooking videos, I had linked some of my laundry videos and things like that. I didn't even link some of the products that I use for laundry, which is not relevant. So I did go in and take some of those out. So I thought, oh, OK. So again, I guess I'm giving too much information and confusing the algorithm. So there's that. Have any one of you also had that issue where you kind of linked a little bit too much? But as far as in the end card and in the, um, the end screens and the I cards, I only link my own stuff. I'm trying to keep you interested in me. And then in that way, I can kind of create my own suggested videos or relevant videos, which is what we all want to try to do. Okay, so now uh, I think I think it was Aisha. I'm not sure. Said they linked to another channel if it makes sense if they're referencing a particular disease. Well, I guess that makes sense. But so, but if you put them there on that i card, so you link them to another, you send them to another channel. They're still on YouTube, so you still get credit for that watch time. Meaning for that watch session is what I should say. But it's not watch time on your channel. But you do get credit for that watch session. So that is uh, something smart and interesting to do. And you, what you might consider doing, though, is putting that, creating a playlist and putting that other video that you're, that you like to send people to that's informative. Put that video in your playlist and maybe you've got two or three videos in the playlist, including that one. Then when they start on the playlist, they look at yours. And then if they go to that next video in the playlist, which might be that one off the channel, then they look at that one. But then the next video in the playlist is another one of yours. It kind of brings them back. And so you get credit for all of that session time. So that could be another way to address it. But I know in my Thanksgiving 101 playlist for last year, I put in one of Martha Stewart's uh, videos in there where she talked about how to handle the turkey as far as like washing it and cleaning it and that kind of thing. 
which I'm going to have to change what I've been doing with that. How many of you guys watch poultry? This is completely off, off target, but let me just ask you, how many of you watch poultry? I'm going to have to address that in, in one of my videos. But so if you watch poultry, just drop a comment. I do because I do. So Aisha said she washes poultry. Uh, Gina does. Tammy does. Michelle's place is clapping. So I think she does. And then Michelle says no. Here's the thing. I do. And I just feel like you have to wash it because it's dirty. You know, like that meat comes from the butcher or the whatever, and it's dirty and you need to wash it. And Diva says she does, but we're not supposed to. And so I just had a, saw a YouTube post earlier today by Lisa Sutton on Sutton's Days. And um, her question was, how many of you wash poultry? And then her next question was, if you're washing poultry, stop it. And uh, she had a statistic that said 45% of people still wash their poultry and you're spreading salmonella. Salmonella is really bad with like poultry. So the thought is this, and I hear this from um, like the CDC says, you know, don't wash poultry. And there was some cooking show that said don't wash poultry. And what they say is, no, it's not that you're washing the nutrients off. What they say is that when you wash it, you're splashing the salmonella bacteria all around. So you splash it around on the sink and on, the, and maybe you touch it on, you get it on the counter or whatever, and that's causing salmonella and leads to disease. Doesn't have anything to do with washing off nutrients. It has to do with the salmonella. They say if you just go ahead and cook it, the natural cooking, the heat of the cooking kills any bacteria that's on it. So washing is unnecessary. And me and Mary at Mary's Nest had this same discussion because she showed how to cook turkey on her channel. And she cooks two small turkeys for her family. I guess think she said she has a small oven. So she cooks two small uh, turkeys. I cook one big turkey. And um, so I said, I wash my turkey. I'm old school. I wash my turkey. So and I wash my chicken. But. Yeah, Dr. Oz says don't wash it. The CDC says don't wash it. And they say don't wash it because, again, of splashing of the salmonella. Now, what I do do, though, is when I wash it, I try to be careful not to splash. And then when I'm done, I have some Clorox kitchen cleaner that I spray all over the handle of the faucet, all over the counter. I spray everywhere, wipe it down, and clean it up right away. So that's what I do. You know, I use my kitchen cleaner, but I have to address that in one of my videos because really they say don't wash it. And, you know, I'm one of those that always says when you know better, you do better. And if the research shows that we shouldn't do this or that, you know, I'm a big one on, well, the research or the evidence supports and I'm still washing my dog on poetry. So that's your off target subject for the day. That's just what you guys wanted to talk about tonight now, wasn't it? So anyway, I, I'm digressing, but I just had to ask. So there's that. So that's another my bad because I watched my poetry. All right. So we talked about playlists and all of you guys should be creating playlists. So if you're participating in different collabs or whatever, you should have those on there. I don't think I could either. It's like I, I feel like I got to watch it. I try to keep the water level low so it doesn't splash too much. So there's that. Oh, and he also talked about putting affiliate links up there in those first three lines of their description box. And I thought that was interesting. Now, he said affiliate links if you really want to try to promote something. So like, for example, the affiliate link, well, it's not an affiliate link, but maybe the link for my... Um, a product review checklist. I can't see putting that up there in the first three lines of the uh, description. I mean, it doesn't relate to the video. It doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so I guess that makes sense. You watch it outside when you're butchering it. 
Oh, your grandma used to soak it in salt water. Well, see, your grandmother probably butchered it. And when you soak it in salt water, that helps to get a lot of the blood and all that stuff off of it. Because when my husband processes his fish, he uses salt water to do some of that, to get all of that, whatever, out of the fish when he processes them. So that's probably why she did that. I'm familiar with that. But Oh, my son is calling. Hang on a second. This one doesn't call very often. He leaves out of town. Sorry. Hi, honey. How are you? Hey, honey, I'm on doing my live stream. Can I call you in about 15 minutes? Okay, thank you. Bye. He lives in Savannah, so he doesn't call very often. So I didn't want to just ignore the call. So, okay. So we talked about playlists, I think. Make sure you're creating playlists because, again, that helps with your watch time. So like for my Fruits of the Season playlist, right now I've got five videos in that playlist. I've got two blueberry muffin ones in there. I've got my uh, raspberry lemonade and other things like that. So make sure you're creating playlists. And then think about whether or not you want an affiliate link up in those first three lines because... Um, the affiliate links will take them off of your channel and YouTube doesn't like that. So you have to decide how important that is to you. What well, you bet who watches his poultry? My son? Uh, I don't know. He probably does because he's, that's what he's seen me do. Uh, but my husband, mm, probably so too. Okay. So again, make sure you got your playlist coming up. And, and since we're talking about playlists, one of the things that uh, Sean Cannell always says is um, to start with the end in mind. So for every video you make, you should have a purpose for it. And then you should be thinking, okay, what playlist can this go into? So maybe it's the first video of its type. So when I did my first video for the summer sweets and I did the raspberry lemonade, I was thinking ahead that I'm going to do a fruits of the season playlist. And so that raspberry lemonade was my first video for that session. And then I did the blackberry cobbler and that one goes in there. So now I've got five videos for that playlist, but it started out with just one. So be thinking as you create a video, what can go together and like this Christmas in July collabs that I'm working in, I'll have four videos that can go into a Christmas in July playlist. So be thinking about how you can work that so that if a person starts watching your Christmas in July video on your channel, then they can just kind of go into your playlist and watch others. Yeah, think in reverse is what uh, Tammy said she learned in her speech class. All right. Um, one of the things that Nick mentioned was that he has some kind of a watch time trap that he has or can teach us about to show us how to keep people watching our video. So I'm going to have to find that. I'm going to have to go on there and try to find that because I'm like, I want to know about that. So I'll try to find out about that and bring that to you guys at another time. But I thought if there's something that can help us keep people watching, we need to know about it. All right, and so now I've got, I'm up to my notes about that from Salma's video. And I tell you what, I just love Salma Joffrey. Every time I look at one of her videos, I am struck by what an excellent teacher she is. Her information is just so straightforward. It's so plain, and I understand it. It's like, I get it. Sometimes when I'm listening to other people, I don't understand all what they're saying, but I get it when Sam was talking. So it was really good to kind of listen to it again and just reinforce some of the things that we've been learning. And I think particularly now, since we're kind of in a quandary over the importance of, say, the tags in the description box, the keyword phrases rather in the tag box. And that they're even more important in the description box. Oh, okay. 
And if I don't call him back in 15 minutes, he'll be fine. He's probably on his way home from work and he'll call me on his way home. So I can call him once we're all done. But I will. Let me finish this point, Cheryl, and then I will come and talk to you guys about what I want to ask you guys about. So anyway, when she talked about her um, use of the tags and um, how to just kind of rephrase them. And she was really kind of funny the way she said it. She was talking about how to make your videos look professional. Three ways to make your YouTube channel look professional. How to make your YouTube channel look professional. Three ways to make your channel look professional. I don't think I've kind of worked them or tweaked them quite that much, but I'm going to start. And then she says, create a sentence around one of those phrases or two of those phrases for your description box. And um, so there is that for us to think about. And her video seemed to do great. So now this is the thing. Guess who showed up on the first page of Google today? I want you guys to type in Thriftmas in July. Just if you've got another device like your laptop, your desktop, your phone or whatever, whatever you're not listening on. Type in Thriftmas in July. Cheryl, you got a rather Michelle, you do have to work on that about page because I worked on mine. No, don't say yeah, it wasn't me. No, it was not me. But I want you guys to type in Thriftmas in July. I'm trying, but I didn't get there. But guess who showed up? on the first page of Google for the term Thriftmas in July. So type it in and we'll see who you say. See if you guys recognize anybody. Hello, Wendy, how are you? So who'd you guys see? Did anybody type that in and, and see anybody they recognized on that first page of Google for Thriftmas in July? Did you recognize anybody? You guys still looking? Are you searching? Are you searching? Hey, Andrea. And Tammy, right now we are trying to see which one of the ladies in our sister circle showed up. Okay, so Tammy says she can't type. Somebody's computer is booting up. Rita's computer is booting up. Well, I'll just go ahead and tell you guys then. Uh, Stephanie, Cheryl said, you see yourself. Wait a minute, Cheryl. You typed in the search bar, Thriftmas in July, and you popped up. I missed that one. Now, I'm talking not, not the YouTube search bar, the Google search bar. But even if you popped up in the YouTube search bar, that's pretty darn good. But like in the URL bar up there in the search bar or in the Google search bar, I typed in Christmas in July and um, they got me a little disclaimer. Did you mean Christmas in July? Yeah, on Google. And OK, Cheryl, well, let me just I don't. Do I see you? Don't see you there, Cheryl. Let me try it again. But in this one that I typed in, and again, Thriftmas in July, when I typed that in, who popped up? Well, there is, let's see, there's about eight videos and number six down is Kenya. Kenya. And her title is Mary Thriftmas in July Collab. Hunt number two, Goodwill in Goodwill Hall in July, or the Goodwill Christmas in July. So that's kind of cool. One, two, three, four, five, six. Number seven. She's number seven out of these eleven that popped up on there. So Cheryl's place. You say you see Kenya, and then Cheryl, you're on there too. I don't see you. But congratulations. I'm going to refresh it and see what happens now. So I just refreshed it and I got, uh, I don't know her or her or her. Wait a minute. Nope. 
That's the unapologetic housewife. Well, that's not you. I don't see you on this first, on my page. And as someone just said, sometimes they move around because now when I refresh the page, Kenya's down at the very bottom now. So yeah, I think different people see different things. But even so, that's pretty darn cool. That's pretty darn cool that we see these people that we actually know. And let's see, who is this one? Yeah, but isn't that kind of neat? You see me where? I'm not on that front page. Because I sure don't see myself. So what I'm doing is I'm on like Google. I'm not in YouTube. I'm on Google. And I typed in Christmas in July in the Google search bar. And then about 10 or 12 different people showed up. Yes. So Cheryl, if, it, if you showed up and even though I didn't see it, sometimes different things show up on different pages. But Stephanie, you said you see me. Uh, you see Tracy Ann. I don't see her on this one. Yes, yeah, she's not appearing on this one at all. Let me see page two. But still, Cheryl, congratulations if you appeared even on yours. That's pretty darn good. So I'm looking at page two. Hey, I'm on page two. I like that. And then Stephanie, you're right below me on page two. So we made page two. Well, hot dog. Well, that's kind of cool. So it shows that our keywords and our are working with our titles and our descriptions. So that's pretty good. Now, I guys want you guys to take a look at something. What I want you to do is let's just take a look at Kenya's video because I thought it was so cool that she made it on the front page. So I thought, well, how'd she do that? Because, you know, I want to know if she's got a secret. I want to know what it is and I want to try it. So I went to her video. I got to go back to this other page now. Back to page one. So Cheryl's on page three. Okay. Well, take a picture of it. We got to do a screenshot so that we've got it. But anyway, so I clicked on Kenya's video because I thought I want to see what she's doing in her description box because her title looks pretty darn good. So let's take a look at where her tags are. And I got her turned down so we can't hear her. Oh, hi, Inspiring Mealtime. Good to have you with us. So if you take a look at her title, Merry Thriftmas in July collaboration. And Thriftmas in July was the keyword phrase that I looked for. And she's got that right there in her title. Merry Thriftmas in July. Hunt number two. And then Goodwill Christmas in July haul. So she's got Christmas in July as part of her title. And then Goodwill Christmas in July. So, and then I thought, well, let me take a look at her keywords because her keywords are Merry Thriftmas in July, which is part of her title, Christmas in July 2019, which is always good sometimes to put in the year, hashtag Thriftmas in July, hashtag Christmas, hashtag Christmas in July, hashtag Thrift Hall, and then Thrift Hall, Goodwill Christmas Hall, Goodwill Hall, Christmas Decor Hall. Thrift store finds, Goodwill Christmas decorations, etc. So then I click on LaTanya. So Inspiring Meal Times is LaTanya. You say you're thinking about adding your name to your channel. Hmm, maybe Inspiring Meal Times with LaTanya. I don't know. You have to think about that, but I'm digressing. When I look at her, tags or her keywords most of her keywords that she chose rank so that's pretty good so her merry christmas in july ranked at number one christmas in july 2019 ranks as seven hashtag christmas in july six 
hashtag Christmas and hashtag Christmas in July did not rank at all. Thrift Hall or Thrift Hall didn't rank, but Goodwill Christmas Hall. See how specific that one was? Ranked at number one. Goodwill Hall ranked at number nine. Christmas Decor Hall ranked at number five. Goodwill Christmas Decorations ranked at number five. Hashtag Thrift Store Finds ranked at number 10. I saw that, Cheryl. I think. And then, oh no, I saw Tammy's post. And then Goodwill Christmas Tree was one and Thrifted Christmas Trees is nine. She picked some pretty darn good keywords or, or tags and they all ranked. So that's helpful. Now let's look at her description box because I thought this was quite interesting. In her description box, and she's got some real cute things that she saw too. Yeah, she used some great tags. But now let's look at her description box. And I looked at where it says show more in her, the first paragraph, particularly the first three lines of her description box is uh, keyword phrases. Christmas in July, comma, Thriftmas in July 2019, comma, Thrift Hall, comma. So keyword phrases, the whole first paragraph and then the hashtags. The second paragraph, she said, oh, hey, Tashi. Today, I'm participating in the Merry Thriftmas in July 2019 collab, hunt number two, hosted by Secondhand Tracy Ann. Be sure to visit Tracy's channel and view the playlist. And then she's got the link there. So most of the keywords or keyword phrases that she used, she used in a paragraph at the beginning of her description box. And then she told a little bit more later. I thought that was interesting. And it certainly worked for her because, I mean, she popped up on the first page. So that's pretty darn good. So now that you guys told me that I'm on page two, I'm going to go and take a picture of that so that I can keep it. Because I'm like, hey, that's pretty good. Page two, I will take it. Okay. So I know you guys are laughing at me. That's okay. So now let me ask you guys this. Oh, so Tashi says, sorry to interrupt. What is it, Tashi, that you're interrupting about? You got something you need to talk about? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Tari's lost an aunt. That's always, an aunt is always hard to lose. I am so sorry. I hope you can get through the loss okay. So you're going to be out for a while. Okay. So you have our condolences. We are so sorry. It is just so hard when you lose someone that's close to you. And it's not like you get over it. You just try to get through things. So very, very sorry to hear that. We understand. Most of us has lost someone close to us. So we understand. Um, I'm going to get back on track um, real quick. And that's just to ask you guys about... Um, at Sama Joffrey's video, she said she had a download that we could get her video content planner. Did anybody download that? Because um, I thought it might be good for us to do that, to download her video content planner. It's supposed to be something to help you plan your video content, kind of plot things out, help you look at your keywords and different strategies. I think we probably all should. So, yeah. So, yeah, Tashi, we will definitely say some prayers for you. and We'll be thinking about you and uh, it, it will be tough. It'll be tough. Hmm. Oh, but back to the keyword planner. What do you guys think about downloading her video content planner? I think it could be beneficial. I think I'm going to download it just to kind of see what it looks like. Now, that means we'll have to put in our email address, that kind of thing. But, you know, we'll be on her list for when her course comes out. But I think it could be interesting. So there's that. Oh, and then one other thing I wanted to ask you guys. Did you guys notice how she ended that video? I thought it was so interesting. So she didn't say, well, thanks for coming and, you know, all this kind of stuff. But 
she talked about how she ended her video. She summarized what she talked about. So she summarized what she told us. And then she said to be able to plan better or to be able to plan your strategy for your YouTube channel, download my video content planner in the description box below. So she just kind of slid it in, told us how it would help us. So she talked about how she could give us more value. And then she said, you can get it here. And so then I thought, I, I think it's worthwhile trying to do. So I thought that was pretty good, though, the way she did that. Yes, I do have a course come out as well. I'll talk about that in a second. But I just really like the way that um, she did that. It was like she said, so to help you be able to strategize better, I've got this video content planner that you can download. So just click on the link below and then you can pick that up. And I thought, hmm. So she told us about that. And then she said, and to help you even more, I've got another video that I'm doing next week about how to end your video. So be sure to come back for that. So she just so nicely invited us back. She let us know what's coming up. So I learned something from her every day and I've been trying to employ some of her strategies. So now, yes, I do have a course coming out. I wasn't sure if I should talk about it tonight because I talked about it yesterday, but I have a, an online course coming out that will teach you how to do um, product reviews. And, um, oh great, 17, I like that. But anyway, my course will teach you how to do product reviews. So if you wanna get started now in doing product reviews on your channel, I do have a product review checklist that's a um, printable that you can click in the description box below and download that. Now when you click on it, it will require that you put your email address in and it'll put you on my list to be notified when my course goes live and I can let you know when the course comes out. But then you have to confirm the email. So when you click on it, it'll ask you to confirm, which means you've got to go to your email to confirm it. And if you don't see the email when you go in your inbox, look in your promotional folder, your junk folder, or your spam folder, whichever one you have. But they tend to go to promotions, and you might find it in there. And just click on it to confirm. And then once you confirm, you'll get another email that will have the uh, link in that. And then you just click that link, and it pops up, and you can just print it off. And it will help you get started doing product reviews on your channel. And then my product review course, it's called Product Reviews Made Easy, How to Do Product Reviews the Right Way. One of the things that I'm learning is that you have to have a tagline for everything. So my tagline is how to do product reviews the right way. The course should be out in about another 30 days. So hopefully by um, the uh, end of August or the middle of August, it should be available. And the cost of the course is $27.00. But I'm going to give my sisters in the circle a discount, two-thirds off. You guys will just have to pay $9 for it. And because, uh, again, you know, we're all growing some stuff together. Uh, and um, But I'll give you more information about that when it comes out. Now, here's the thing that I wanted to talk about in regards to myself. So you guys know that, you know, like I've really been quite busy with trying to do two shows, a Sunday and Monday show. And then my other signature content, which has to do with cooking and cleaning and laundry and that kind of thing. And so some of my signature content has been, I don't want to say suffering, but not has been as, uh, as much because I've been real busy over here. And so this week when we had our, our group session with uh, my YouTube mentors, they said, look, they said, you are building two bridges. You're building a bridge over here with this YouTube stuff. And then you got a bridge over here with your homemaking stuff and you got to choose and they said your channel will grow faster if you niche down and you know we've been talking about niching down and they're like you need to niche down and I thought but you know like it, it was really hard for me to decide what to do and you guys know a couple weeks ago I hit the wall and that's why my one video didn't go up on time on Friday morning because it was just like I was exhausted. And all I could do was just like, I was like, bam, I just kind of was exhausted. I had to go to bed and I had to stay there until I kind of like recovered and then was able to get back on track. So 
I'm thinking that what I probably will do is we probably won't have the Monday session. Oh, plus I'm going to have cataract surgery coming up in a couple of weeks. Anyway, and so that's going to kind of put a crimp in my style as well. So I'm probably going to drop the Monday YouTube growth strategy show. But I want to keep the shout out Sunday show. But I might need to tweak the format just a little bit. And I, I really like the community that we are building here with the Sister Circle. I like the support that we are giving one another and growing from one another. But it's like, you know, and I, I realize I cannot start another channel. I can't manage two channels. I mean, I, I can barely manage one channel, so I can't manage two channels. So I know I can't do that. So this is what I thought. But you guys can tell me your thoughts and what you would like to see. So if we keep shout out Sunday. And one of the things I thought I might do is kind of do it like you do a like a magazine or a variety show. So on shout out Sunday. I will continue to do the collabs and updates and open invites, which is helpful to all of us. And I think it meets my niche because it's about might be cooking collabs or cleaning collabs or decorating collabs and things related to home and homemaking. And so we're sharing that information with one another and offering each other suggestions on that kind of stuff. So that, I believe, still meets my niche. And I thought maybe I might consider... I don't know, adding one or two other things in there where I talk about some kind of tips or, I don't know, housekeeping, homemaking, hell, I don't know, something, again, that meets my niche. And maybe from like 7 to 7.30 or to 7.40, we address this. And then in the last segment of the show, we talk about YouTube strategies. So that if the people that come because they just want to hear the cooking, cleaning, laundry, health, and beauty, then they know from 7 to 8 or 7 to 7.45, that's what we're going to talk about. And then from 7.45 to, we'll say, 8.45, we're going to talk about YouTube strategy. So I'm thinking that's one way to kind of sort it out. What do you guys think? And what would you want to see if we had to make a shift, which we do have to make a shift in how we do this? What are your thoughts? You guys, give me some help here. Because like I said, I was burning the candle at both ends and it met in the middle a couple weeks ago. And I know it's going to take a time for you guys to process it and then to kind of type things in. As Kenya said, she said, I can't type that fast. And especially if you're trying to type on a phone or a tablet, I can type pretty fast on my laptop, but. So um, Latanya says maybe the Monday night one could be held on the Facebook group. Monday night. And I thought about that. Because, uh, you know, that's possible. I thought about that. I did think about that. Because then at least when you look at my regular show and when you look at my channel, it would be a lot cleaner. Because now when you look at it, you see, and I tell you what, you know, I got a channel review Thursday, what's today, to Monday, Thursday, when our group met. And guys, I'm just so glad I was there on time. Like the session started at 8 o'clock. I was there at 8 o'clock. And um, I was there at 8 o'clock. And I didn't even know I was going to get reviewed but I had you know, submitted my information for just in case and I had been reviewed once before so I thought they're going to pick somebody else but they picked me and the first thing she said was I know you've been struggling with this but you're doing this and you're doing this and you need to do one thing So I was thinking about trying to do all in one on Sunday. Now, Michelle likes the all in one on Sunday. Um, and, and I can certainly see the Monday one from the Facebook live sometimes. I don't know if I could switch it up simply because it's the continuity that people expect. And for those people that come, um, 
And for those people that come because of that, they're not going to be able to relate. Oh, well, it's next week and not this week. Because you guys know that even if I don't send out a notification, you guys know that I'm to expect me here at 745 on Sunday and 7 p.m. on Monday. That that's where I'm going to be. So it has to be consistent. So I don't think I could switch off on and off. But I did think about the um, strategy session on the Facebook group. But the other thing, and I think that Michelle just pointed out, is that Monday is also prime time, especially now that school's going to be starting again. I realize we got the Monday session started probably toward the end of the school year. No, we were probably doing it before then. But I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. But what are your you guys' thoughts, though? I, I could certainly see us doing it on the Facebook group, but then maybe if we did it on the Facebook group, I could post the dates that we're going to do it on the Facebook group on Mondays, and then we would have to, you guys would be able to look at the calendar in advance and know when we're going to come on, but it wouldn't be weekly. Um, because, like, for right now, I try not to put any cleaning or cooking or laundry videos up on Monday. So Sunday and Monday are out for me for those videos. And a lot of collabs post their videos on Sunday and Monday. So if I put one up, then like since my videos are coming on at 7 or 7.45, I try to get those up at 7. So I've got at least 12 hours in between to gain some traction. I don't know if that 12 hour thing really makes a difference, but I at least try to gain some traction. So... Yeah, and see, that's what I've been thinking that, you know, I could certainly see us doing the Monday group maybe once a month and I post it on um, um, in the Facebook group because then you guys could all, you know, just we could just be on there live. Or I suppose we could do it here, too, though. Because then if it's just once a month, it wouldn't be. Um, but let me put that down Facebook group once a month. What are you guys thoughts about um, switching up, though, like the format, though, for the Sunday group? Because, you know, we would still look at uh, upcoming collabs, that kind of thing. Oh, what did Tim Schmore say? But upcoming collabs, that kind of thing. You're thinking Sundays only. So upcoming collabs, that kind of thing, because that's in our niche, because we need to know about what's coming up. And then, again, some kind of tip or trick that's in my genre cooking cleaning laundry or health and beauty and then the end of the show we talk a little bit about um youtube strategy i actually kind of like the sundays only myself but like i just kind of wrote the facebook thing down on mondays but i kind of like the sundays only hmm. What did Tim Schmoyer say? I'm waiting for that. I like Tim Schmoyer. So it sounds like a lot of people are agreeing with Sundays. Okay. And then those people that can't join us on Sundays can watch the replay. Because that's what happens now. We have a lot of people that can't come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sundays only sounds great. Sounds good to me, too, actually. Well, I tell you what, I'm not sure when that's going to happen. I've got a my eye surgery is on July 26th. And so I have to sort out um, what's going to happen with the show that week. And I kind of got some plans in motion for that. And then um, but, but it'll happen sometime in August, because, like I said, I got to get my eye surgery done and. Um, and I'm kind of nervous about that. And then uh, we'll go from there. So. Oh, and speaking of posting lives to a subs and lives to somewhere else, one of the things that that we looked at in the videos that we looked at last week that talked about how to do your content strategy and how to you know, use 
one piece of video and create more than one content. Um, how many of you guys are really trying to sort out that content to more than just one platform? How many of you guys are doing that? Like, I'm doing good if I can put up an Instagram post. I put up several Instagram posts on National Blueberry Day. And I, when I put out the blueberry muffins, I posted an Instagram post with a picture of the blueberry muffin. But that was about it. But what I'm learning is that we should have a YouTube video and then we should put something on Instagram. And not just Instagram post, but Instagram story and Instagram TV and then maybe even Pinterest. Is anybody trying to do all of that? Because really, I find that if I can take care of this, I don't have time to do that. But, but is anybody else good enough to do all of that? Because that's something we should consider. So you do Facebook and Instagram, that's it. Okay. I don't even do Facebook. Yeah, I might go on Facebook for a minute, but when I'm on, I'm either looking at something related to my mentoring group, Instagram and Facebook. Anybody do anything with Instagram stories? I know my niece is on there. I should probably ask her what she does on there. I never look at that. All I can do is post one little picture, a still picture to Instagram, and then I'm good. Okay, so Michelle was doing uh, quite a bit. Well, let's, let me suggest this. Let me suggest this. Let's download the video content plan that um, Salma Jaffrey had in her video. Let's download that and take a look at it. And I know one of the things that she talks about in her, on her channel is how to use one content and make 40 pieces. Now, I've not been able to do that, but she does talk about how to do that. So let's download her video content plan and see how we can apply it to our channel. And then for those of you who might be interested in um, starting product reviews on your channel, I do have a link in the description box below for a free product review checklist that you can download. So Click on that and uh, get that and see if that can prove useful to you as well. And I'm going to try to do something. I'm going to try to figure out Instagram stories. Oh, hi. Do you get back pay for it's not back pay, but do you get paid? Yes. It's not like back pay. So this is how it works. So she asked. So. Do you get back pay for your videos when your channel gets monetized? So what happens is, is let's say you're now monetized and you're going to get a check. What they look at is like for the past 30 days, like where you are now. How many views do you have on a particular video right then? So it, but but it could be an old one that's been up there for a long time. But if it's making you some money, they will do it. Let me pull up one of mine. Well, I won't pull it up, but my macaroni and cheese recipe makes me money every month. Now, it's not a lot of money, but it's my highest rated ranked video. It has the most views, the most shares, the most watch time. And so I make money off that mac and cheese recipe every month. I wish I could duplicate that. I need to make something else. I just haven't got to that yet. But I suppose, though, as we talk about this, one of the things that Sean talked about in one of our sessions was what should you start doing? What should you stop doing? And what should you continue doing? And so you got to sort that out. You know, mention mentioned that to the group. But. Um, hmm. Well, when I get to 300,000 views on that, I'm going to create me a little one of those little um, certificates and thank everybody for it. Maybe when it gets to 250, I'll do that. But yeah, so as we're talking tonight, 
when they say like, what should you start? What should you stop? And what should you continue? Maybe one of the things I should stop is the Monday session so that I can focus on some of the other things that I need to focus on. So we'll see. Let me ask you guys that question. What should you start? What should you stop? And what should you continue? So what are you guys um, having for dinner tonight? We're having leftovers. I made a chicken breast last night. Well, not chicken breast, a turkey breast. Actually, it was in the freezer, and it was one of those already prepared ones. But what I did was I put it in that croft and brazier that I've got. I cut up a bunch of carrots and potatoes and onions and celery and just kind of threw them in the pot all around it. And I had a bag of the um, pulled pork seasoning sauce mix and you know you can um anything you can put on pork just about you can put on poultry because you know pork is just another form of white meat and it was amazing it was so good so some people had spaghetti some people had tuna we're gonna have leftovers we're having leftover tonight of what we had yesterday so chicken divine oh that sounds good so inspiring meal times, you said you should start posting more videos. Well, let's just look to see how many you're posting. So Tammy, you said you stopped doing Marvel meal, Marvel movies. I should think that would have been a good one. Yeah, I'm looking. So there you are, inspiring meal time. I am a new a new subby for you. I'm number one forty. And let's just see. You have a channel trailer. Meet our family. Oh, look at that little baby doll. So now, looks like you started your channel three years ago. Let's see what it says you're about. This channel was created as an opportunity for you and I to share our love of food, love of cooking, and love of the fanfare or simplicities of meal time. If you're anything like me, you like to try new recipes, and this channel is a means to inspire your next creative meal adventure. Okay, so there you there's that. Now let's see how many videos. So videos posted. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, well, this is the thing, LaTanya. Your last video was three months ago. Yeah. So you can't grow if you're not posting. You have to post at least weekly to grow. So there's that. So, all right, guys, I think we've covered all of our content unless you guys have a question. But yeah, so uh, Latanya, you know, think about what you can do to apply the different things we've been talking about and different things we've been learning. All you guys, you know, we're trying to get there. And you're going to post information for the collab. But now you're going to need to show up because, like I said, it's been three months since you've posted anything. So. So, uh, yeah. OK, so use this to give you a jump start. All righty. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mandy in the making. She does those what's for dinner and what's for dinner is huge. It's always trending. It's always trending. And I, I watch her. I, I've seen some of her videos. So listen, guys, I'm going to go and get my dinner. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight. And I do appreciate your advice and your thoughts. I also appreciate your concern for my health. So we'll see. I'll try to get some things sorted out and we'll go from there. 
So yeah, we will go from there. So I'll give my son a call back. And yeah, so um, I've got 18 people on. If I could get 18 thumbs up, that would be great. So if you haven't put one in, if you could do that, I'd appreciate it. And uh, there we are. So yeah, everyone has a, have a good evening. Have a good dinner. And you know what, Tashi, I appreciate you too. Thank you so much for saying that. It's, you know, it's good to hang out with you guys. And that's why I was like, I, I don't want to um, like give up either day. But I think, like I said, going to have to do something. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.